Hey, what's up everybody? Jeremy Donson here with TheDrumProfessor.com. Today we're going to be doing Centuries by Fallout Boy, and we're going to start at 25 seconds into the song. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Just uh, email me at Jeremy at TheDrumProfessor.com. And if you haven't taken advantage of the live, free, one-on-one -on -one jam session with me, definitely do so. You'll be glad you did, and we can go over anything that you want. And you can do that by simply visiting my website, or uh, just email me directly and we can schedule in a time for you manually. Um, also going to be doing some videos as well that are for sale on my website. More than welcome to check that out too. All right, so here we go, starting at 25 seconds. So to break this beat down, once you crash with the bass, you're going to hit AND or hi-hat by itself. Crash AND. Now once you do that, crash and bass, you have a bass by itself. Crash and bass. Crash and bass. After the bass drum, crash and bass snare, and you have snare and hi-hat together. Now, I've talked before in my other videos about how important a prep stroke is. Um, if you haven't watched the other videos, definitely do so. I mean, there's a lot of good material in those videos, but um, when you do a prep stroke, it's basically short for preparation. You're preparing to kick your bass drum. So you really want to raise that beater as the hi-hat hits. As the hi-hat's coming down, your hand for the hi-hat, your foot goes up. You're prepared to kick the bass drum when the time comes. So crash and bass snare, like so. Um, I have several students that really struggle with this independent skill with the bass drum because it comes right in between everything and it's just its own timing in your foot. So getting that down is very, very important to do that. Just get used to raising and then kicking. It's like opposite motion. Your hand comes down, your foot goes up, your foot goes down, your hand goes up, all at the same time. Okay, so once we get used to that, and when you practice that, by the way, if you need to work on that, um, just try it slow and just get the timing down, up, bass, up, bass and once you get the timing down speed it up speed it up and then put it in with everything else slowly and then gradually speed it up now the rest of this beat crash and bass snare and bass and bass snare and crash and bass snare and bass and bass snare and Okay, so now once you get really comfortable with that beat, and I'd recommend just playing it several times in a row. And once you get comfortable, now we add the second measure. Now you're going to do this every other time. So measure one, you do what we just did, and this is measure one. One, and a two, and a three, and four, and. And then measure two, we simply just add one extra bass drum, but unless you're used to that, it's not so simple. So to do that, we're going to do a double kick. So it's very similar to what we did before, but you have that and bass and bass bass. You have that extra bass in there. So and bass and bass bass. So I'd say you get used to this first, and bass, and bass, or high bass, high bass. And then another bass right after that with the next hi-hat. So putting that together, measure one, and this measure for measure two, it sounds like this.
All right, and then there we have that. Now, um, at the beginning, it is heavy hi-hat, meaning that they're not closed, but it's cracked. So the hi-hats are rattling against each other, uh, but they don't you know, ring like a normal cymbal. So putting that together and then showing you the fill, it's going to sound like this. So you have the first measure, just like you did with the one bass, not two. Second measure, you have the two basses. Third measure, you have the one bass again, same as the first one. And then we do a fill in the fourth measure. So check it out. <laughs> So when you check out that fourth measure, you hear that I'm doing four basses in a row fairly quickly. And this is slower than tempo, right? So when you put it to tempo, it's a bit faster. But uh, so the fourth measure is played like this. Slowing it down. So and bass, 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 bass. That's how you're going to play that. One, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. And it's hi-hat and then bass, both, bass, both. Right? So it's going to get pretty quick when you add it to the music there. Um, now, if that is just really challenging for you, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure it is for a lot of drummers, that's, that's four basses, it's very quick, um, then just do two, right? So you don't have to double time on the other two, just do two instead of four. Just like that. Bass and bass there, and bass, bass, bass. All right, so now we have that. Then we go into the main verse. Same, same stuff again. Um, you do the one bass, two bass, one bass, two bass. And then when you get to the part where um, he goes, ah, I can't do it. I, I can't go that high. I won't even try. But, uh, but anyways, when he gets to that part, um, you're going to do this. Okay. So it's, so it's going to go bass and bass snare and bass tom tom rest. Right? Rest. All right, so then after we do that section, by the way, you know, just to recap, you just do this part again, but you do it uh, closed hi hat this time, not heavy. So once you do the fill in fourth measure, That, that fill there with the bass drum leading into the snare section is the same thing as before. Just do the two basses instead of four. And then when you start the snare part, the bass is with it also. Right? Okay, now, starting the snare section, this is how you play this. Now, to break this down, we have a triplet in there, right? It's like one, a and then dig it a dut, or triplet and, or triplet one. So the way we're going to play that is like this. Now, I recommend this sticking. Sticking simply means which stick do you use and why. Uh, but I would do it like this. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left. And one of the reasons why is watch my left hand. It's just doing this, right? And remember, in uh, if you've seen other videos, which I'm sure most of you have, then if you can ever have something be your timekeeper in whatever you're doing, you want to do that. You want it to be your metronome, where it's just consistent. And the left hand is consistent if you stick it that way. Now, 
Once you do that, you're going to switch, and I recommend starting right-hand lead on the triplet. Um, on the first one, it's not super important, but it but it's a good idea to be consistent with it. And in the second half, it, it is pretty important to lead right-hand on the triplet. And it's not just because I'm saying it's important. It's, it's important for this reason, right? So the reason why it's important is on the second part, you do... <laughs> You do a six or a seven stroke roll actually on the snare drum. You do a, you use six of the hits on the snare and one on the crash. And for those of you who don't know what a seven stroke roll is, it simply means you hit seven times. So seven stroke roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so a seven stroke roll, if you lead it left handed, one, two, three, four, five, six, it opens up your right hand to do the crash. And if you're right handed, you want to do that to go back into whatever you're doing. You want to get in the habit of crashing right because you got to come in right. You don't always have to crash right. Of course, you can crash left, but it's good fundamental sound training. Uh, for yourself to stick it properly and you'll run into a lot less issues later on and if you try experimenting with other sticking there may be something else that's more comfortable for you but I think you'll find that it'll kind of get you mixed up in how you're playing the snare and you might add an extra part or something um, so let's recap so the first part right left right left left right left and then dig it to dut or triple it and right left right left Now once you do that one, the second section is similar, but we have that seven stroke roll and we take one snare out and start the triplet sooner. And the reason why he does that is because if we're adding a seven stroke roll in there, we have to make room for it. So we shorten the part before the triplet and then add that in and it'll still fit. So that's why we take the snare out. All right, so let's play them both together first and then I'll break down that second half for you. All right, so the second section, same thing, we just take out that left stroke. So right, left, right, left, left, right, and then we do the triplet. Okay, now the way we do this, now most of my students, because I've taught this song to several of my students, and what they end up doing is this. They speed their hands up really crazy fast. You don't have to do that. You give, the, you give the stick the control of the bounce. So you're doing a bounce stroke. Now, if you have the speed, you can certainly stroke that. Or use fingering technique. But it's perfectly fine to bounce this instead, taking your middle ring and pinky fingers off of the stick and just bouncing. When you have a bounce, it's one motion with the hand. Okay, and it allows you to go pretty quick with that because you only have to move it once, but you get two hits. So it's double time. All right, so to do that, you go... And if you notice, my hands do not change the speed. They don't change at all. It's the exact same speed. I just let it bounce. Right? So just have one speed. And then there you go. Now putting these two together, it sounds like this. And there we have it. All right, so guys, I hope this was very, very helpful to you. Now, one last thought on that roll. If you're having more of a crushed roll instead of nice and open, if it sounds more like this, or you're having trouble slowing your hands down and you find yourself doing this. Right. 
then contact me, let me know, and I'll give you some excellent pointers and really awesome shortcuts to how to really master that and get it down really well and very efficiently and quickly and easily as well. So um, I know for many, many, many drummers, including uh, very experienced drummers, that is an issue. So let me know. I'd be happy to help you guys with that. Just email me, jeremy at thedrumprofessor.com, and say, yo, help me, man, and I'll help you. So uh, I hope this is very helpful for you guys. I love this song. It's really catchy, and it's a ton of fun to play. Um, so, again, any thoughts or comments, please don't hesitate to ask. It's why I'm here. So, guys, I hope you have fun. Stay awesome and rock on. See you later.